friends, welcome back to our introduction to fluid mechanics in the Unit 404, Lab 7, Impact of a Fluid Jet. That means we have only one more lab left, total there will be 8 labs. So in our Lab 7, let's see what is our learning objective is. So today we are going to observe the force exerted on a surface by a fluid jet. So if this is a nozzle water gonna come out from here and this is our deflector so we're gonna measure what is the force exerted on the deflector by the uh, nozzle then we're gonna calculate the theoretical reaction force on a plate that means on the deflector from the jet so one would be experimental one would be theoretical and finally we're gonna compare the theoretical value with the experimental value of the reaction force. So let's, before we do the test, let's cover the theoretical part, how we're going to do the, measure the theoretical calculation and uh, the experimental. So what is the theoretical reaction force on deflector after impact from a jet? Again, this is your nozzle, water will come out from this way, and this is your deflector and which is balanced so when the water hits there is a force upward which is balanced by a spring and this is your counterbalance weight and you have to balance it uh, with the level gauge this is uh, important for understand the theory so now if we apply the Newton's second law of motion uh, here at the uh, uh, your deflector then the force is we know from dynamics is mass into acceleration. Now, if we do a little bit of modification, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Now, if we move the time with respect to mass, well, this m is the mass of fluid flow on, on a certain time. So, change of that mass over the same time, delta. So, this is the mass that flown through the jet during the time delta then it will be mass flow rate and then we will have the change in velocity so we can also write this mass flow rate in terms of density and uh, volumetric flow rate so this is the force now for our test we're, what we are going to do is that we are going to use different types of deflector so here, the one you see here, it's a 90 degree deflector. You can have 30 degree deflector, 60, 120, or 180. A 180 degree deflector means that all the water coming up, it will deflect all the water 180 degree. A 30 degree deflector will means water will come and then it will deflect 30 degree from here. And we're gonna talk about this uh, detail. So how we gonna consider the difference of the angle of the deflector in our calculation. So if you consider from previous slide force is finally we have the uh, mass flow rate which is the you can write density of water and the volumetric flow rate and change in velocity would be outlet velocity minus the inlet velocity. Now this is the free body diagram if you see this is for example one deflector and the deflection angle is alpha so the remaining angle is theta now if we if we again analyze that um, equation that we had so the velocity so this is the reaction force so if we assume this upward force uh, is positive then your force downward is this um, reaction force is negative so we put negative F rho Q is the same now the out force is this way so this is theta so if we take along y axis you will have cos theta of the velocity so that is your negative v cos theta because it is downward minus the inlet velocity which was upward so that was positive so that's why negative is there but the v is positive so it will be negative v so if we take V out, then we'll have rho QV and then minus, minus cancel out from both sides, then you'll have the force um, 
this direction is rho b rho q b cos theta plus one. Now, um, if you if you consider and if you see that for the v out and v in, we did not change the value of v. We just changed the um, angle. This is because we assume the magnitude of the flow doesn't change. Uh, if you apply the energy equation from the nozzle to the um, uh, deflector, you can find that the velocity doesn't change. Only the change is in the direction, and that's why we kept the velocity same. So again, on this equation, your F is the force exerted by the deflector on the fluid. Okay, so it's the reaction force. Rho is the density of water, which is 9 Eight, 8 kilogram per meter cube and theta theta is the 180 degree minus alpha because uh, alpha is the deflection angle so you will know from your deflector and then but in calculation you have to use theta so we're going to use theta that will be actually 180 minus alpha and um, Q is the volumetric flow rate which is volume per second and you can measure it during the test and V is the velocity of the fluid, we will also measure it. So this is the theoretical um, force. Now what would be the experimental, remember in previous slide I told you there will be a counterbalance of the force, so that will be the experimental value, the, how much weight it needed uh, to balance that jet, um, that will be experimental. So the goal is to compare this, the, the theoretical one with the experimental one. So um, let's see how our uh, equipment looks like. So let us introduce ourselves with our setup. You see inside the nozzle, which is an eight millimeter diameter. And above the nozzle, you see a rod where we're gonna connect our deflectors. And at the top, you see the spring and the platform where we're gonna put those uh, weights. So here we have the deflectors. So these are the deflectors, five type of deflector we have. We're gonna connect from this way. And this is the deflector deflection angle, which is 60 degree. And this is the 90 degree. So if we connect from here, it will be deflected, water will be deflected 90 degree. And this one, if you connect here, so it will be like this, and water will deflect 30 degree and so on. This is the 120 degree and this is the 180 degree deflector. And also we have some weights, some 100 gram and uh, 50 gram weights that we're gonna use over here on the uh, platform. So what kind of data we're going to collect? Um, so for our calculation, we need the diameter of the nozzle, which is given fixed, um, is eight millimeter. We have to collect. Um, we have to collect the deflection type, uh, the mass we have applied here, and then the volume of water that passes through the nozzle after given a certain time, and that is the time. And finally, we have to calculate the force exerted. So let's see what is the just this procedure for this. To begin your test, first you have to see whether it is balanced. So the bubble is inside the circle, so it's balanced. And there is no um, friction on this one, so it's freely moving. Now you have to adjust the uh, pointer here along the line here. So it's um, aligned. So next you have to unscrew this from three side and then you have to take this platform off and put the nozzle, put the deflector inside. So first I'm going to start with the 30 degree deflector. So I have to unscrew the holder. I will come off and I have to attach our deflector over here.
It's easier if someone is holding and you're screwing the holder or deflector. Once it's ready, you put it back. Make sure uh, it's uh, the bubble is in the center. It moves, so I need to switch it. Yeah, the bubble is back in the circle again. And it's balanced, so let's give it a check. It's working. Now I have to screw it back so that it doesn't move. And the final one. So it's all secure and um, make sure that you have connected. So this is the uh, inlet of this system that goes to the outlet of the pump here. And what it does, it does, it goes water all the way to the bottom here. Here you see. So the water comes and it goes through the nozzle, which is uh, eight millimeter, and it will hit the deflector. So now the setup is ready. Once ready, you have to put select a weight to start with. So I'm gonna put 100 gram. So you see from balance, once I put the 100 gram, it went off, right? So now our goal is to turn on the pump and uh, regulate the flow such that it comes back on balance again. So let's turn on our pump. And I'll regulate the flow. Slowly. So see what I was reading the detector. I'm increasing the flow. You see, at this point, the weight is balanced with the pointer. So now I have to, I can take the next stage of data. So next, we have to come over here, and you see there is a, a stopper to measure the volume. So once you are ready with the timer, you can. Uh, you can do this and lock this one and then it will start uh, measuring your water volume. So let me grab a stopwatch and we'll do that. So I have my stopwatch ready and I will just uh, control the volume here and turn it on. So I have stopped the flow so the water is rising here and you will see it's right this is the zero when it comes to zero I'll start my timer and then I start it the water is going up you see here so I can do is that I can measure how much the volume was there given a certain time or I can do see how much from 0 to 25 so I can go for a fixed volume, how much time required, or I can do a fixed time, how much volume it was uh, covered. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop at 20 liters. So it's almost 20. It's 20. So I got 35 seconds. So that's how I'm going to measure that uh, 35 uh, seconds was required to cover uh, fill up 40, 20 liters. So the data collection is very easy for this test. You have to repeat the same procedure. I have changed the deflector to 60 degree. I have added more weight. We can just start with uh, 100 first. So you see it's uh, imbalanced again here uh, from the pointer. So again, I'll turn on the pump. And regulate such that it's balanced. So again, what you have to do is that again, uh, collect the volume of water flow and using a stopwatch. Next, what you have to do is that change or add more weight. It will be imbalanced again. 
and we have to regulate the flow again. So I'm increasing the water flow and to balance again with the pointer. So at when it's balanced, you have to take the data again. Again, you stop the water flow going down up through the tank, measure the volume and using a stopwatch. And you can add more weight until you have reached the full, uh, almost full of the pump power. So this is the flow for 90 degrees. Now I have attached the 120 degree. I'm gonna turn on the pump. Now even with small flow, flow of water is generating a lot of force, so I can go way up. Let's go for 400 grams. Now I have to balance it. So I have balanced 400 grams for this one. Again, you have to repeat the procedure. Now I have put the final one, which is 180 degree, meaning all the fluid flow will be reflected 180 degree. So let's start with uh, at this 200 force, since uh, it will generate a lot of force. Let's turn on the. This is the 180 degree reflection. I can add more weight and increase the flow. So we have collected our data. Now what you have to do is that you have to plot the theoretical force um, F on x-axis and the weight in y-axis and these are the cluster of different nozzle so um, once you plot it you have to observe the plot and answer whether the relationship that you see from the experimental theoretical is expected if uh, it's off from the expected value how much and you have to, you can do that by measuring the slope so also compare with the um, expected one and what you have got from your test and list any possible source of error you think that may cause the deviation. So that was it uh, for our uh, lab 7. We'll, next we will cover our lab 8, the final lab. Till then, see you. Thank you.